Hello, my name is Rachel and I am here today to do a belated wrap up of my reading for February and March. I am feeling a little bit sad right now because this is my second to last cup of tea. I have a massive box of PG tips that I brought back from England at Christmas and it has one more tea bag in it and after that I'm going to have to drink shit Swiss tea. <laughs> Which, like I don't know if you just like been to other countries and tried to have tea well tea they call it black tea you can't just call it tea they don't have tea as like just like general tea and then you have the other teas I, just, I don't know why I'm talking about tea I'm just annoyed that this is like my second to last tea I need to savour it yes I'm going to talk about the books that I read in the months of February and March today I'm going to do February 1st because I actually did plan to do a wrap up and I wrote down how I found all the books so even though I might not remember it this writing does so I wrote it down and I just didn't film a video. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about those and then I will talk about, I only read two books in the month of March and they were both rereads so I'm not gonna talk about them too much. So I'm just gonna jump into it. I'm gonna talk about the books from like my least favourite to the best books that I read in February 1st. So yes, the first book that I read is called Timo the Adventurer and it was book one in I think a series but I don't think there's a series out yet. It was a proof copy that I got of NetGalley and it was published on the 20th of that month of February so it was quite new and the script was by Jonathan Garnier and the art was by Johan Sacre and this was just a cute little story about a little boy who's like going on an adventure and he loves books and he always reads about adventures and he wants to have his own adventure and if you've read Arthur in the Golden Rope I would those two are very 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 similar and yeah I really enjoyed it it was quite cute the art was wonderful it really like pulled you in that was good I gave that one three stars then I read Snot Girl Volume 2 which is California Screaming can I just say I absolutely love the artwork for Snot Girl number one that it goes over like both sides and just oh my god it's so colourful like I think because she has green hair and like her friend has pink hair and everyone's like hair and clothes are really like stand out as coloured so it's quite a nice graphic novel to read like it really it really pops without it feeling like I feel like the graphic novels that do that are usually like comic booky superhero-y type things and I don't actually like those so it's nice to have that same like format of bold colours without feeling like I have to read books I don't like. <laughs> Art style very vibrant and fun and yeah what I like about this is just that it's a graphic novel and there's a lot of action and tension going on but it's very character focused like we get a lot of character development from our main girl here snot girl which I really like I feel like it's it's very different from a lot of graphic novels that I've read and yeah I'm really enjoying it I think it's really really good next we have a book that I've already spoke about and that I think I've read three times now <laughs> but this is my first time ever reading a physical copy and I was so surprised that I found it because I knew that it was being published and I knew that it had come out but I didn't think that it would be in a Swiss bookshop because it's English books being brought over here you just assume you're only going to find like the bestsellers the number ones in England and so I was surprised that I found it and it was Heartstopper by Alice Oseman so I love this graphic novel I've been following the webcomic for about a year and this is the first volume of it that's been properly published and it's just beautiful like I always loved like I loved it on the webcomic the way that she sets out the squares she has like all these squares really spaced out and really different from other graphic novels that I've read but I think it really works and it worked fantastically in here as well so this was great and I also found out that the forecast for volume 2 being published is the 11th of July which isn't that far away so I'm very excited to read that one as well I just realized I haven't actually been saying what anything's about so Snot Girl is about a fashion blogger and basically she takes a lot of tablets I think they're basically like kind of like anti hay fever tablets because she has a lot of allergies but then she gets moved to some new tablets and everything sort of starts to change that's what happens in volume 1 Obviously, I'm not going to tell you what happens in volume two because it's volume two. And then this one is about two boys. This is, well, it's about two characters from Alice Oseman's book, Solitaire, which I haven't read. But it's about those two meeting and how they develop feelings and relationships and very, 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 very cute relationship. I enjoy it. 
Okay, what have we got next? Oh, so next we have another book that I got off NetGalley. I'm gonna just look down to find the name of this because I'm not gonna remember it. So it is the conclusion of The Women Are Some Kind of Magic series by Amanda Lovelace, the, the poetry collections, and it was The Mermaid's Voice Returns in this one. So the first one was The Princess Saves Herself in this one. Second one was The Witch Burns in this one, I think. We had the black one, the white one, and then this one's like a bluish colour, and it's The Mermaid's Voice Returns in this one. They're all poetry collections and I gave this one four stars and I really really enjoyed it. So it was published on March 5th and I really really enjoyed it. I think my favourite of all three of them has definitely been The Witch Burns in this one, the second one. I think that had a really fiery, passionate kind of drive in it that I really enjoyed. However, with this last one, what I loved is that the last section of this poetry collection, she incorporates a lot of different poets and there's different poets who have poems in there. So it'll be one of her poems and then another poet, one of her poems and then another poet, one of her poems. And it really worked well because it gave you this kind of fresh feel to something that you'd been reading for a while. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. And I've enjoyed the series as a whole. I think it's definitely a very good poetry series. I've not really read a poetry series before so it's been a nice like way to sort of delve into that without committing too much because I feel like some poetry series would probably be very complicated and it was a good one to start with. <laughs> okay so then we have a audiobook that I listened to in February. I remember that I was listening to it when I was on holiday in Davos because I listened to it the entire train ride back from Davos and then I just continued to listen to it for the rest of the day until I had finished. Like it was that sort of, I just enjoyed it so, so much. It was fantastic. And is If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. So this is a known voices book. And we basically follow Amanda. She's moved to a new school. She's moved, she was living with her mum, but she's moved to live with her father, where she used to live before they split up. She's moved to a new school. She's very popular at the new school. And guys like her and she's like, everything's good. However, the thing that I really enjoyed is that Amanda is trans. She's finished her transition and she is like in the body that she wants to be. She feels like she's happy with who she is like on the outside, matching the inside, that sort of thing. And basically within If I Was Your Girl, we follow her journey towards like self-acceptance. And I think it was so well done. So the first thing that I loved about this book, her being trans isn't used as a plot device. It isn't something where it's like oh twist in the story she's trans like I don't think that would have worked or been respectful in any way shape or form and that's not what happens you are aware very early on that that is something that she is dealing with and it's never it's never something that's used as like a gimmick in the story which I really enjoyed the second thing I loved is that oh my god it was so fun it's so so fantastic how she's done it so you constantly have a worrying about other people she's constantly worried about she makes loads of friends and she's like but well, these people wouldn't be my friends if they knew and they think I was weird and blah 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 and this boy likes her and he starts dating her and she's like but he wouldn't like me if blah 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 blah, blah. and she stands in the way of it and she's always like blah, 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 blah. And then with her dad, like her dad tries to be as supportive as he can, but he also like struggles a little bit still. And she's like, you know, he wishes that I had never been trans and never had any of these problems and blah, 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 blah. You're reading it and you can see how much all of these things that she's thinking, she's just putting in the heads of other people. They're not saying them to her, but she's putting it in their heads because it's how she feels about herself. And so, oh my God, oh, it's so good. At the end, there is this scene, and it is like a scene from a rom-com. It's the thing where there's been a big drama, a big falling out, people haven't spoken, and then the main character and the love interest come back together and they speak. And it's like that moment where like, they come back together in a rom-com, it'd be like, I always loved you, blah, blah, blah. I overlook all of your flaws, blah, blah, blah. It's that moment. And oh my God, I love that Meredith Russo didn't let that be the thing. So this guy basically says to her like, blah, 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 blah. I wish I didn't know, or I wish you weren't trans, or I wish. He, he says something that he thinks isn't offensive, but it kind of is. And she just stands up for herself so much and then just walks away. And it's that moment where it's like, they gave this like rom-com moment at the end of the story 
to her being able to accept herself as a person and who she is and feeling happy with herself. It was so beautiful. I loved it so much. So I gave that one four and a half stars. Like the ending just absolutely blew me away. I think I would have given it like four stars, but the ending just really took it there. I was so, so happy with it. And I'm so glad that it's out there because there aren't a lot of trans stories out there. And I feel like this is a really good one. It has a good message learning to accept who you are even if people around you don't so that was fantastic I will say there is an afterword at the end and Meredith Russo talks about the fact that she wrote the story very perfectly Amanda passes no one thinks like she's trans which isn't massively common and and she talks about a lot of different things where she says you know this wouldn't necessarily happen but I've used it for a fiction book because I wanted this to be such a positive story. So there are things that aren't particularly true to life, but I don't think that holds the story back in any way. Like it's still just fantastic. So I would highly recommend it if I was your girl. It is great. Then the next thing I read in February was a book that I said I was going to read and I was so glad that I read because I always say I'm going to read books and I put books on my TBR and it's really sad. And people like comment on my video like, oh, I'm so excited you're going to read this. I can't wait to hear what you think. Oh, I'm so excited you're going to read this. And I feel terrible because I make TBRs because I love making TBRs, but I hardly ever read the books on there because it's literally like the minute I tell my head what to read, my head's like, fuck off then, we're not reading. So... <laughs> basically just have to read whatever my head wants to read in the moment but I did manage to read this one and it is Saves the Cat writes a novel this is the like adapted version of Save the Cat which is the Blake Snyder book on screenwriting this is Jessica Brody who has adapted this to novel format I read this while I was in divorce I spent the full week reading it and I read this while I outlined that second project that I was talking about that I've just finished a first draft of. And this was definitely the reason that I finished that first draft. I like started studying beat sheets. I put my book that I was writing into one of the genres that she talks about. And yeah, it just helped so much. This is definitely half of the reason that that first draft got written in a month and a half because I feel like just for me, per I know a lot of people don't do this, but for me personally, like if I have a really good outline to follow, it's very easy to just blaze through it, which is what I found after using this and after using the beat sheets. So I'm very, very happy with this. It's definitely a book that I'm gonna continually be going back to. I really, really enjoyed this book. She basically goes into detail about there being 10 genres, not genres in terms of horror, this, that, that, blah, blah, but genres in terms of the redemption arc, the hero story, the monster in the house story, like more the journey that a character will go on as the genre. I can't imagine a story that wouldn't fit in those 10 genres. However, there are some stories that are a little bit weirder and a little bit experimental that probably wouldn't. So I'm not gonna say that everything does. The first draft that I've worked on before, reading this, I definitely had a lot of moments where like things started to click and I was like, okay, th that's gonna really help me with editing that. I read Plot and Structure by James Scott Bell, which was a really good introduction to structure. However, I would say sack that off and just go over this one. This is a lot better. This is a great book. This was five stars, by the way. And the next one is also five stars. Okay, so then we have the last book that I read in the month of February was Just Juliet by Charlotte Regan. And I listened to this on audiobook, although I will be buying a physical copy as soon as possible because it is just everything. It is basically a female, female version of Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda or Love Simon if you want to go for the movie. It is everything. It is so cute. It is just so perfect. I love it so much. It was everything. So in terms of what we cover, spectrum wise, we have bisexual characters, lesbian characters, gay characters. We have male male romances and female female romances. Also, there is someone who has self-harmed in the past and you hear a lot about their struggles and the scars that they have, which I know like some people won't really mind that there isn't like a scene with him doing it or anything like that but I'm just saying that because I know that like I've had problems with that before and I no matter what just someone mentioning it is triggering for me so yeah that's a that's a thing that's there if that is something that bothers you just know that so we follow Lena who basically becomes fascinated by Juliet who is like the new girl at school I know predictable and yes, you've probably read a thousand stories like that. But what you have read is a thousand straight stories like that and not a thousand lesbian stories like that. And this book is so cute. It deals with her realizing her sexuality really, really, really well. There isn't some 
dramatic moment. She doesn't get outed. No one is like aggressively pushing her. The person who she likes, like the love interest, isn't like, oh, I wish you'd just realised that you were gay so we could be together. Like there was nothing like that. It was a really organic realization which I enjoyed like it was just done really well and they have a really good chemistry and I loved the moments when they were together the male male romance in it as well I loved I thought they were adorable together and I think it was really cool as well because there was a lot of gay people in a friendship group together so I feel like it's really common with these books where there'll be like one gay person and no none of their friends are gay they don't know anyone who's gay if you are a part of the LGBT community or if you just know anything about it, you probably know that it's like magnets. People just like come together the minute they find out that they're LGBT+. Plus. <laughs> so like, I didn't know like anyone when I was younger. And then I came out as bisexual and then suddenly it was like, oh, my friend's bisexual. That person's bisexual. Oh, I have that gay friend. Oh, my cousin's gay. Oh, this person's gay. Oh, everyone around me is fucking gay. <laughs> like you just like pull them all in and you're like, okay, we're gonna start a community. <laughs> And it happens a lot and I feel like in books they don't represent that enough like people just don't have a lot of like queer friends around them in books <laughs> and it's it's just not really how it goes like I think 50% of my friends identify within the LGBT plus community in some way and yeah it's just it is just very common <laughs> for people to be friends with each other so I loved that it did that it had a lot of people who were friends with each other who were also part of that community that was good. Also, like, just the characters are very sweet. We have a really accepting parental figure, which I loved. Like, so, so accepting and just so well done. We also, oh my god, one of the characters, basically, when she's very, very young and she doesn't really realise that there's a thing around being a lesbian or coming out or she doesn't realise any of that, she just, like, tells her parents that she fancies someone and that happens to be a girl. And her parents educate themselves on how to have a conversation about sex education with her even though like they're not queer they've never had to have that and I think that is so amazing because people always talk about like having the talk with their parents if you're a parent and your child comes out in some way like as whatever part of the community like that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have that discussion with them, but you kind of have to have a discussion in a different way. And I think it was really good that it mentioned that. We then have the opposite side of we have parents that are not so accepting, but the way that they were dealt with was really well done as well. And it was very true to life. Like that is exactly what my ex's parents were like, like in every single step of the way. Like they're not aggressively against it, but just they're just like not happy with it. And they're not happy with it for all of her life. And because she's bi, like she'll might get with a boy later and her parents would be happy because she's with a boy, even though they've like accepted that she's bisexual, which it's just kind of this like awkward thing. And there's just there's just so many things that I loved about this book. Like I loved the core of this book like I loved the relationship that's in it I loved the main characters but there were so many other things that I think it dealt with that I really enjoyed and so yes loved it I gave it five stars it's one of the favorite books that I've read this year and would just like highly recommend it is fantastic you should read it if you enjoy that sort of content and if you don't you should probably just read it anyway because it's really fucking good so they were all the books that I read in the month of February whereas March I was kind of like you know I didn't read that much in March so I'm just going to mention it quickly here so I read two books in March they were both rereads they were both LGBT books because the story that I was first drafting is also an LGBT book there's this concept of like refilling the well of like surrounding yourself with stories that are similar to your story because it kind of helps you find different pathways and think about things in different ways and all that sort of stuff I ended up doing that a little bit um so the first book that I reread <laughs> is a book that I read in like January so it's, I didn't see the point in talking about it but yeah anyway I reread What If It Says that I had literally just read by Becky Albertelli and Adam Silvera and I loved it. I didn't read the epilogue which if you I think I filmed a review of this book where I said I hated the epilogue so much and it made me take um, half a star off or a star off or whatever because I'd enjoyed this book so much and I really just didn't enjoy the epilogue. However 
I didn't read it this time. So it was just great all the way through. <laughs> this book follows Ben and Arthur and they meet in New York and they have this like amazing summer of getting to know each other. I just, I love it. I think it's so cute. It's so funny. It's just brilliant. But I have filmed a full review of it. So I'm not going to talk about it that much. If you would like to hear my thoughts on it, I will link it in the little card thing for you. I'm still going to say it's four and a half because if I'd have read the epilogue, I would have been annoyed. So I'm still going to say it's four and a half. But the main story of it without that, is five stars. And the other book is I listened to the audiobook of Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. This is a book that I read like two years ago I think and it made me start to realise like how much I really enjoy reading like LGBT fiction. So it's a book that I really appreciate and enjoy. However, I didn't love it as much and I think it's because I listened to it on audiobook. It just, I still love Simon, I still love Blue, I still love their relationship. But I, I think, number one, I was listening to the audiobook and I don't think it comes across as well in audiobook because the emails don't come across well. Because in the book it's like multimedia and they've like formatted it really well with the emails. So that just didn't come through with the audiobook as much. So that was a bit of a disappointment. I think I was just more focused on other characters because I'd read books where they featured after. So like Leah on the Offbeat, we get a lot more about the side characters in Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda. And so reading it, I kind of found myself focusing on them a little bit to be like, oh, can I see any of that? The stuff that comes later starting here. I just found that a lot of the characters weren't very well rounded. Like Nick is not a very well rounded character in my opinion. So yeah, that was a little bit disappointing, but I still did really, really, really enjoy it. And I still would highly recommend it. I think it's a fantastic story. So I just started to notice that a little bit this time, but I didn't notice it enough to like bother me or pull me out of the story. So it wasn't like a huge thing. I think it's literally because she's wrote another book that focuses on the side characters after, I can't help but focus on them in Simon now. And I'm like, oh, they don't really meet up to what I'm expecting. They're all the books that I read in March. So that is everything from February and March. Yeah, that, that's everything. If you've read any of these books and you enjoyed them, if you didn't enjoy them, if you disagree with me, let me know down below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.